Welcome back to Stars and Myths. We have seen in a previous episode the stars, asterism, or the moon and sun are almost universally described in some stories as person. Many stories play out in the sky, but how do these stories connect to the practical use of stars? In this episode, we also explore the connection between star laws and star observation, revealing complex relationships between the two. Let's first simulate the sky in the northern region of Canada in December 2025 using the Stellarium. The main stars of the Big Dipper circle around the celestial pole during the course of one year, but also during one night. The Big Dipper is shown here in yellow. The bear has four power on the ground, and as the night progresses, the bear stands on its leg. At one point, the bear has flipped, now upside down, still circling above us. Now let's see how it circles during the night. Over the course of a year, over a large range of latitudes, the bear is seen to circle the North Pole. In the northern region, Ursa Major is generally the most important constellation and the source of many myths. One of the most famous stories is quite simple but evocative. Hunters have been pursuing a bear for a very long time. And suddenly they realized that the bear had risen into the sky and they were following it. The bear and the hunters are no part of your semaja. Is a story inspired by the bear rising on its hind legs during the night? Well, probably. In the Arctic, Ursa Major is the main star practically used for timing and direction finding followed by constellation not known in the Western world, constellation that include Castor and Pollux. Then we have Orion, Polaris, and the Pleiades. Memorizing the position of Ursa Major during the night on previous days permits finding north using a time marker such as sunset. In most regions in the Arctic, the main stars of Ursa Major are a caribou. We see here the body and back of the caribou with the antlers. Associating stars with a person or an animal is almost universal. But within a region, one typically encounters many versions around a few relative themes. Also, the attribution of a star, asterism, or constellation to an animal might change within a region. In some Arctic tradition, the Pleiades may be a bear or a dog encircling a, a bear. In other places, the dog corresponds to the Hyades, the bear to Aldebaran, and so on. Again, local variations are an almost universal phenomenon. The question is now whether these indicators were used in the different Arctic tradition. Were they essential elements for navigating or for timing the season on the night? Or just one element among many? Let's start with navigation. Navigation is extremely important in the Arctic, often a question of life and death. In this extreme environment, Knowing how to move efficiently is essential. Polaris, the North Star, is too high overhead to be useful. Instead, Arctic travels fix the gaze on star low on the horizon. At this latitude, star rise and fall slowly, as you see on the image. Fixing a star at the horizon in the right direction permits you to navigate and to drive a sledge at the same time. The Inuit driver had to either correct mentally for the star rising on the horizon 
or move to honor the star after some time. But Inuit elders emphasize that stars are just one of the many tools. They use also sea current, kelp, landmarks, ice features, aurora borealis patterns, memory of past journey. The stars complement this method, not replace them. This versatility reflects a highly adaptive and responsive approach to the challenge of navigating in extreme climates. Mac Donald has written a very instructive book on Inuit astronomy, star lore and legend, in which he explains how Inuit people prepared the day before sunrise and stars were used for timing that time. The changing season not only determined the daily activities, but also the diet. Stars are just one way of knowing the season. Counting the moons, observing the environment, or recording the return of birds all contributed to understanding the changing season. No single method was used. The Arctic sky, both mythologically and practically, is dominated by the Great Bear. And as we move to lower latitudes, the focus shifts to a different set of stars. The Pleiades, Iadis, Aldebaran in Taurus and Orion, whose annual return often dictates the rhythm of life. This focus on stars' annual return brings us to a key astronomical concept, the heliacal rise, which is a star first appearance in the morning sky just before sunrise. For many cultures, the heliacal rise of a given star coincided with the start of a new season, a time for planting or other significant events. This practice is found all over the planet and the Pleiades in particular serve as almost universal season markers. Let's illustrate this with the ancient Greeks. In works and days, Hesiod tells a farmer to harvest when the Atlas-born Pleiades rise. The work is estimated to have been written around the 8th century BC. The ancient Greeks used the rising of important stars and constellations to date significant events in their calendars. Several examples have been found graved in stone. To help people track time more easily, Holes were bored in front of each entry. A bone, bone peg was set in a hole in front of the current entry. The list compiled by a contemporary of Meton, Octemon, was created in 432 BC. The list contained much information, and on the slide you see a few examples. In the whole list, the Pleiades and Orion appear seven times a year as time markers, four times the Pleiades and three times Orion. So by combining different stars and the different position during the year, one may establish an almanac of important events. It is how most tradition worldwide proceed. The chosen star are selected to meet local needs in recording important time markers. The procedure can also be easily adapted to compensate for changes due to procession over the year. For instance, the heliacal rise of the Pleiades changed with latitude and over the years. If Orion marked an event around the time, now the Pleiades may possibly be a better marker. Interestingly, the famous Antikythera mechanism also has on the front side similar inscription related to the rising of the Pleiades and constellations. In our next episode, we discuss gender skylars and the complementarity of myths and rites with an example. Stay tuned. See you next time. And here again, 
the main reference if you want to dig into that topic. Bye bye.